Hi. So today's video lecture is on um, Maria Edgeworth's story, The Irish Incognito. Um, so Edgeworth was a great writer of fiction. Uh, she was one of the first people who really made fiction writing respectable. Um, she was also Anglo-Irish. Um, and that's really quite significant because the Anglo-Irish are a sort of betwixt and between class. Um, so England had a long sort of history of conquering Ireland, uh, being driven out, trying to subdue the Irish, and so on and so on. Um, and so uh, by the time you get to 1800, um, England has, uh, Britain has ruled Ireland since uh, the 1650s, um, and it has by and large been a pretty unhappy sort of relationship um, because the English nobles, English military leaders, and so on and so on, displaced a lot of the, the Irish nobility, Irish landowners, and things like this, and took over uh, what are called plantations, um, which is basically like the English created their own sort of massive estates, uh, largely in, in what's now Northern Ireland. Um, and so this was a class known as the Anglo-Irish, and they were not fully Irish, because they weren't ethnically Irish, they were ethnically English, but they also weren't fully English, because they came from Ireland and they owned lands in Ireland. So they didn't really fit uh, sort of in, into either uh, category. And, and Phelim O'Mooney, in the story, the hero of the story, is also Anglo-Irish. Um, it says here at the bottom of 255, his mother was an English woman and he had lived much with English officers in Cork. So, I mean, he is in this sort of space of betwixt and between, uh, in which he is not fully Irish, but he's not really English either. Um, but he makes this bet with his brother that uh, that Phelan can go to England, live as an Englishman uh, named Sir John Bull, and convince people that he is English for four days without being caught as being Irish eight times. Um, and the stakes of this wager are um, <clears throat> if Phelan wins, he will get a hundred guineas from his brother. If Phelan loses, he will have to go back to Ireland and become a tradesperson. Uh, working with his brother in business. Um, and one of the sort of stereotypically Irish things about Omuni, about Phelim, is that he detests the idea of business. Um, he is what, what Edgeworth calls a traveling gentleman, or a walking gentleman. Um, so he he's not a beggar, he's not employed, um, but he needs some kind of employment to sustain himself, he just refuses to do it. Um, so he goes to England, again under the name Sir John Bull, and this is significant because John Bull is uh, a traditional representative of England and of British culture. Um, he's sort of the British equivalent of Uncle Sam for the US. Um, so John Bull uh, typically, uh, characteristically British name, um, and then, and so, uh, O'Mooney goes and he is convincing people, uh, that he is an English, uh, aristocrat. He gets caught over the course of the story seven times for being Irish, and many of them to me don't sort of make any sense, the reasons that he gets caught. Um, like, he, he slips up and says things that are apparently characteristically Irish, but would never be said by an English person. Um, like, at one point he says, um, she was, this is uh, 264, by the way, she was as well fitted out a vessel and as gallant in, and in as gallant trim as any ship upon the face of the earth. And this sort of cockney Englishman says, ah, ship on the face of the ocean, you mean. That must be an Irishman. Um, and then later on, talking about a, a painting of Captain Murray at a party, he says, that's an incomparable and inimitable picture. 
it is absolutely more like than the original. And a Scottish woman says, only an Irishman would say more like than the original. Um, and I don't know if, I don't know if in 1802 these would be phrases that would be characteristically Irish but not English. Um, but it's things like this. Like, he, he will use a phrase that people then sort of identify him as being Irish by. Um, and, and this is not necessarily, I think, meant to be realistic. It's meant to build tension over the course of the, of the story um, so that we get eventually to him being recognized seven times. Um, but before, I, before we talk about um, the recognition and then sort of the upshot of all that, I want us to go back to, uh, to another sort of important portion of this story, which is the role of Mary Sharperson. Uh, Mrs. Miss Sharperson. Um, so uh, Sharperson and uh, and Mr. Queasy, who are both appropriately named, as it turns out, um, Sharperson is the love interest of Omuni throughout the central portion of this story, um, and she is a wealthy heiress. Um, uh, supposed to be inheriting the estate of Rascally, Scotland, uh, which is, again, a, a significant estate name. Um, and, and essentially what happens is that Queasy comes up with this plan that actually fits in line exactly with what Omuni plans um, to get Sharperson and Sir John Bull married. Um, and he seems to have no sort of ulterior motive here. I mean, Queasy just seems to be a sort of good chap who wants to, to do right by these two people that he quite likes. Um, but Sharperson is a significant contrast. She's what we call a foil to O'Mooney. Um, so, um, Sharperson so first off, let's talk about the names here. I mean, uh, Sharperson, she's a sharp person. She's a con artist. Um, the estate name that she claims to have is Rascally Scotland, and she is she is a rascally character. Um, so there's something a bit sort of heavy-handed about this. And then Queasy's name is significant because when it is revealed that... Uh, that Sharperson is a con artist who's been duping people out of uh, hundreds or thousands of pounds, um, Queasy is understandably quite upset. Um, so in, in this sense that she is a con artist or that she is convincing people to believe something that isn't true, um, Sharperson is connected with uh, Omuni, who's doing the same thing. The, dif the difference, the significant difference in what makes them foils um, is that Sharperson is exploiting the people that she's trying to convince, whereas Omuni is convincing them to win a bet that has nothing to do with them. So when Sharperson convinces Queasy and others that she is an aristocratic lady and an heiress, she gets money out of them. Um, near the bottom of 263, Queasy says, Why, she's 500 pounds in my debt, and I know of her being thousands and thousands in the books of as good men as myself to whom I've recommended her, which I wouldn't have done for my life if I had not known her to be solid. So Sharperson is getting basically millions and millions of dollars in today's money, because this is massive amounts of money, millions and millions and millions of dollars out of these people who think that she is wealthy. Um, whereas, whereas Amuni is not sort of taking advantage of people. Yes, he's lying to them. He's trying to convince them that he is uh, Sir John Bull, but he's not trying to get money out of them. He's not conning them in the traditional sense of convincing them in order to get a material benefit from them. So there's no exploitation in what Amuni is doing, and this is the contrast. Um, so this is this is the way in which they are foils of one another, or that Sharperson is the foil of Omuni. Um, 
but let's so let's skip to the end of this. Um, so uh, Omuni is recognized seven times over the course of the story. Uh, if he is recognized one more time before the end of the fourth day, he loses his wager, um, and so ultimately he sort of gets pulled up in front of a court for forgery uh, because he had signed Sir John Bull's name onto a document. Um, and, it was, and, and his writing was recognized by, by a clerk who knew Phelan O'Mooney's handwriting. Um, so he goes to jail. Uh, he refuses to speak, which is, of course, um, a challenge for him, uh, considering uh, the stereotype of Irish uh, loquacity, uh, the stereotype of, of the Irish as being eminent talkers, uh, and the fact that throughout the story... O'Mooney has consistently gotten in trouble because he can't sort of restrain himself from speaking. Um, so he goes to court, uh, and he's put in jail because he refuses to speak rather than lose his wager. But here's what I find really fascinating. At the very end of the story, uh, last half a paragraph on 269, it says, Having won his bet by wit and steadiness, he was now prudent and he had now prudence enough prudence sorry he had now the prudence to give up these adventuring schemes to which he had so nearly become a dupe he returned immediately to ireland to his to his brother and determined to settle quietly to business his good brother paid him the honey hundred guineas most joyfully declaring that he had never spent a hundred guineas better in his life than in recovering a brother phelim had now conquered his foolish dislike to trade his brother took him into partnership, and Phelan O'Mooney never relapsed into Sir John Bull. <clears throat> now here's what's interesting and ironic about the ending. So on the one hand, both brothers win their bets, which is, I guess, a happy ending. <clears throat> Phelan gets his hundred guineas. Um, Phelan's brother gets Phelan settled into business, and so they both get what they wanted. The ironic thing about this is that while it says here, Phelan O'Mooney never relapsed into Sir John Bull, he oddly does, in, in the sense that um, O'Mooney is giving up all of the things that had made him characteristically Irish in this story. So he's giving up his sort of jolly lifestyle, he's giving up his carefree approach, and he's becoming more stereotypically English. Um, because the English middle class, upper class, uh, not the aristocracy, but sort of the wealthy upper class, um, and the Anglo-Irish, uh, the more English of the Anglo-Irish, are characteristically tradespeople. So, what Phelim is doing here is substituting the sort of carefree attitude and approach of the Irish to things for the more sort of bourgeois, middle-class, uh, capitalist approach characteristic of the English. So even though he is officially, even though he's, he's sort of stated as never relapsing into to Sir John Bull, into this English persona, he is acting more stereotypically English now than he did uh, than he did when he was playing Sir John Bull as a as an English as a as a con. So.